Hi everyone. Hola a todos en Colombia. My name is Thomas Dawson and I've been to Colombia 15 times and I spent over three years in this beautiful and amazing country. All different trips of course but accumulated three years worth of time. Right now I'm in Cali, uh, a little bit of a crazy wild city, third largest city in Colombia. But what I want to do is I want to tell you about uh, my newest vlog. I just started doing vlogs and um, I was recently in Salento, which is a beautiful artisan's town up in the mountains uh, in the department of Quindío and it's right in the heart of the coffee region. And if you're interested in going there, you can get there mainly from going to the city of Pereira and taking a bus for approximately 50 minutes, that's 5-0 minutes to Sorrento, or you can get a bus from Armenia and it's less time to get there. But one of the uh, things you can do is take a, a tour of the coffee plantations. So a year ago, I actually did that, but I wasn't, uh, didn't even have a selfie stick back then, and so I wasn't doing any vlogging. But I did take some footage of the tour, which was actually in English. So I thought you might enjoy that. And the other thing I thought you might find really interesting is the million peso question. Does Juan Valdez actually exist? Well, I found out during that tour. So stay tuned for the answer to that one. Anyhow, I hope you enjoy my videos. And if you do, please help me get the ball rolling by clicking like and subscribe. That's all for now. Hasta luego. The first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is get yourself to Salento, a quaint little town that boasts a great climate up in the mountains of the coffee region. Next, you're going to find the main plaza where the Jeeps are located and nearby the jeeps you'll find a little ticket booth where you can inquire about prices for getting to one of the many coffee plantations. The one that I decided to go to is called El Ocaso. So they are turning from green to red or from green to yellow depending on the tree. Yeah, did it shoot? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like that. So these beans, after we peel them off, mm -hmm. we have to dry them. Because mm -hmm. from the inside out, mm -hmm. we are going to get the almonds <coughs> or the green beans. And those are the ones that we roast and grind to prepare a cup of coffee. Yes? The in so, this one. Yes. For example, the, the inside this of this. This, this is another shell, like the second shell that coffee beans have. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it has to be removed. Remove. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to show you later. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Well, right here we get this ladder, and it's the one that pickers used many years ago to collect the beans on the tall tree. Oh, but it was risky yeah, and yeah. dangerous because it moves a lot, and sometimes coffee trees were not resistant. They broke, and coffee pickers fell down, getting hurt. That's why today we just trim the trees because it's gonna be safer for pickers, and it's also better for production. So we mainly use the coffee skin and after the peeling process the workers bring that here and they mix it with some cows or pigs manures with some grasses, ashes, leaves, fruits. We try to use everything here to get an organic fertilizer that we will use for new plantation. And back there we get the coffee trees or different kind of trees that have been cut and we use those as firewood at the kitchen to cook.
come with a coffee that they have collected. But they use baskets like this, 10 kilos baskets. Once they fill it up, they place the beans in 40 or 50 kilos back. They bring it on their shoulders and they weigh the coffee right here with this uh, uh, scale. scale. Yeah. And then they are paid by kilo because, uh, well, they are paid by kilo and each kilo is paid for 700 pesos. We could say that it's cheap, but actually in a good harvest they collect more than 100 kilos a day. Around 140, 150, 170, depending on their skill. One one looks like the one that we saw after. This is quite different because it's newer, but they do exactly the same. We get the coffee shell there, going outside, and then it's taken to the compost place. Coffee beans are falling into this drum, this cylinder, which is going to be spinning, separating by size of the beans. The big ones stay inside and we collect those beans right here by the drum. But those beans are not good because those beans are overripe. So those are used only for second class low quality coffee. The small pieces are falling through into the cylinder, which is right here, and it's gonna be spinning faster because of these engines. We put some water for washing the beans and removing the slime. Electrical engine with a turbine inside and this is an oven. So it's going to supply hot air constantly from the bottom to the top to dry the beans at all. It's air drying. Look like peanuts. Why? Because the taste and the smell is only after the roasting. Yes. No, we use it as fuel for that oil. Yes. As it's totally dry, as it's totally dry, it looks like paper in the first release. So we use it as fuel right there. Yeah. And crossing across the across the mountain. Yeah. to get the coffee into the to the closest point. So uh, Juan Valdez is just an icon of uh, representation for Colombian coffee when it's export. So the big question is, yes. there is no actual Juan Valdez? Well, no. <laughs> yeah, because the real names are not Juan Valdez. Actually, <laughs> this is the first Juan Valdez that he uh, grabbed up, and he was in Colombia. He was Cuban. <laughs> Not that, yeah. Too funny. This is the one that we get nowadays, yeah, in his Colombia. Beans on this desk, yes. And for example, the beans that we wash, it takes about 10 or 15 days depending on weather. But for the ones that we don't wash, like honey or natural edition, it takes around uh, 3 or 5 weeks. Yeah, it's gonna be longer because we have a different <coughs> dose. And after the drying here, we are going to place the beans into a warehouse. And there is a final sorting of quality which is done by the I'm going to show you that. So for example, the quality is done. As I told you, it's done by hands and it's by women. As you can see on the picture right there on the wall. It's done by women because in this farm, we provide job to single mothers from the area. So they can come here to get a job which is easier as well than going to pick the coffee. The picking is mainly by men because it's a hard job. They're, they're using a net like that on the wall. They place the beans inside and they start shaking the beans. Yeah. Some garbage falls down and finally by hand, they will place apart all of the imperfections like this. And here we get some overripe beans, yes. some broken beans, so those are good. The final result of the trophy is called Masilla. Masilla means low quality coffee. We get a part of the good news. The first class coffee beans like this. 
we sell about 40 to 45 percent of this coffee to the National Federation of Coffee Growers, and then they will export the coffee. The remaining, we use it for our brand and also for some customers that we have in the U.S. Scratching down the beans like this. It's a really long. You can see the almonds are strong, so are not broken, yes? But the shell is weak and is broken when we crush them. And after that, using a fan or blowing up, they yeah. got the shell apart. But it took really long. We stir the beans around like this. But it took really long, about one hour per kilo. And as you can see, the results are not the best because some beans are darker than others. So it wasn't really even, it wasn't really efficient, okay? But today, we get machines like this. It's a roaster which provides us different levels of roasting. The most common are light, medium, and dark. Light roasting is the one that is used by professional coffee tasters. They rather uh, use light roasting because it's better for them to taste the coffee and define the proper cup. Checking the acidity levels, sweetness, fragrance, aroma, everything. But light roasting is not commercial. Okay, now I'm just going to pour the hot water. First, I'm going to pour a bit in the middle and then around it. Like this. This is to get a pre infusion or a blooming. So now the coffee here is expanding. Yeah, it's moving, it's, it's, it's like increasing. When the coffee stops, like after 30 seconds, that's perfect, and then I continue pouring the remaining water. Now it's moving slowly. And we pour the water slowly like this. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Juan Valdez. <laughs> is a fictional character made up for the commercials. Despite being traumatized by this information, I still totally enjoyed the tour. And our tour guide was really nice, very knowledgeable, very friendly. So I hope someday that you're able to come to Salento so that you can have the same experience, enjoy the beautiful coffee region of Colombia. I also hope you enjoy these last few photos that I took in the coffee plantation area where we had our tour. That's all for now. Until next time, this is Thomas Dawson, signing off. Hasta luego!